Last week we looked at uh, that you were created to worship. Amen? You were created to worship. This week I want you to realize that you were also made to conquer. Amen? You weren't just created to worship. You were made to win. <laughs> you were made to conquer. Amen? And so John, 1 John 5, 4, it says this. It says, everyone born of God. Tap your neighbor say, that's you. Amen? You don't have to tap him if you don't want to. Just point to him and say, that's you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Then go ahead and take the same finger you use for them and just point it to yourself. Amen? That's right. It, this is me because it's everyone who's born of God. So if you're born of God, you include it in this. You are victorious. You say, well, I don't feel like it. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to show you exactly how to walk and live in it. But being victorious doesn't mean you don't have struggles. Amen. Come on. The fact that we've got to overcome means that there's things that we are overcoming. The fact that we are victorious and we are made to conquer means that there are mountains we've got to conquer. There are hills we've got to climb. There are obstacles that we are going to have to walk through. We are going to run through troops and leap over walls, but we will get to the other side and we will win. We are created to win. We are made to conquer because anyone who is born of the Father is victorious and overcomes the world because he conquers it all. Amen? And you are born of him. So this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world. What is it? It's continuing persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God. Amen? That's what gives us the victory in every area of life. This persistent, continued faith that Jesus who lives in me is strengthening me. He is empowering me. He is equipping me. He is giving me wisdom. He is guiding me. He is leading me. I will overcome. Amen. I'm, I'm created to do it. And so here's what the Phillips translation says, and I just love this one. Amen. It says, God's heredity within us will always conquer the world outside us. Amen. Come on. There is something in you. There is something hidden in your earthen vessel. Amen. Jesus, the hope of glory, he lives in you. He brought his heredity into you. His DNA. You got the genes of your daddy. Amen. He is a winner. He overcomes. He conquers. He is victorious and you are born of him you are his offspring so the same stuff that's in him is now in you you have his heredity within you and if you would just release it it will conquer the world outside you and the living bible tells us how it says by trusting christ to help Amen. And come on, if you are made to conquer, it tells you how you're going to do it. You're not going to do it in your own strength. You're going to have to trust Christ to help. Amen. We're going to trust Christ to help. Why am I going to overcome? Because Jesus is going to help me overcome. Why am I going to have the strength to do it? Because Jesus is going to give me the strength to do it. Why am I going to have the wisdom to do it? Because Christ who lives in me is going to infuse me with the wisdom and the understanding and the guidance and the direction and the leadership so that I will win. Amen. I'm going to overcome. We're going to come out on top. I'm going to walk through this thing. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Notice you don't stay in the valley. You walk through it. <laughs> you come to the other side of it. Amen. Yeah. And there are some valleys, but we don't live in the valleys. Amen. We conquer them. We overcome them. And then we move forward. Yeah. Amen. You are made to overcome. And the way you overcome is by trusting Christ to help you in everything you need. He's going to give me what I need. E.W. Kenyon, he said this. He said, the reason the majority of Christians are weak. Now, how many know that shouldn't be the reality? We should be strong. Yet, we find that many times we are weak. And here's the reason. They are earnest. We'll press in the prayer. And yet we stay weak. And here's the reason. It's because we've never dared to make a bold confession of who they are in Christ Jesus. Amen. The reason the majority of Christians are weak, even though they're earnest, they'll press in, they'll pray, they'll do some of these things. But yet they stay weak because they would refuse to dare to make bold declarations about who they are in me. And so all I'm trying to tell you, praise the Lord, is we need to make some bold declarations of who we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. So say this with me. Say, God's heredity within me always conquers 
the world outside of me. That's right. Amen. Now, you, you got to say it like you mean it. Amen. You, you can't just say it. You, you, you got to make some bold declarations concerning that. Amen. It's not just mouthing words, praise the Lord. It is saying it with some feeling and some oomph and like, like it's true because it is. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a second chance. <laughs> Stand up to your feet. Praise the Lord and say this with me again. Say, God's heredity within me will always conquer the world outside of me. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Be bold in your declaration. Amen. Don't stay weak. Get strong. There are certain things you got to shout them out. Amen. There should be some areas that you are shouting. When walls fell, it wasn't because they were silent. It's because they were shouting. Amen. Come on, man. They done marched around that city seven times, and then they shouted unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Not defeat, but a voice of victory. And the walls came crumbling down. Amen. It's amazing what begins to take place when we begin to trust God for help. Amen. And we get bold in our declarations of the one who has saved us. Amen. Amen. So 2 Corinthians 6.16, it says, you are the temple of the living God. You are that. God lives in you. As he has said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them. God lives in you and he walks in you. I will be their God and they shall be my people. So here's your confession. I want us to all say this together. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say it like you mean it. Be bold about it. Hallelujah. God dwells in me. And when I walk, God walks. That's right. He said, I'm going to dwell in them and I'm going to walk in them. Praise the Lord. And I will be their God and they will be my people. You say, well, Pastor, that sounds a little bit bold. I know that's the point. If you're going to get strong and victorious, you got to get a little bit of boldness about this. Amen? Praise the Lord. No, God lives in me, man, and he walks in me. So where I walk, God walks. He supplies me with strength. He supplies me with what to say. So when I talk, God talks. Amen. Amen. Now, that means we need to be listening to his voice and yielding ourselves over to him. But this is the goal, isn't it? That Christ is living in us and he's living in us big. Amen. And we ain't scared of nothing. We fear not because we know that we have the victory because we were made to conquer. <laughs> Amen. And so let me give you another verse, praise the Lord. Uh, Galatians 2.20, this is the distilled Bible translation. It says, I considered myself as having died. Amen. This old me who I used to be, yeah, he, he dead and buried. And now I'm living a second existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. Man, I consider myself as having died, and now I'm living a second existence. What is this? Jesus infusing me with his power, infusing me with his wisdom, infusing me with all the things I need to overcome and succeed. Amen? And so, and so Jesus is now the one, and he's just living in me, so he's able to use my body. Amen? Come on, man, and when I pray for the sick, it's not me praying for the sick. The Christ on the inside of me is using my body. Amen. Come on, he walks in me. He talks through me. Amen. When I lay my hands on the sick, he's laying his hands on the sick. Amen. Yeah, yeah, so this is what I want you to say. Praise the Lord. Here's your confession. Jesus, come on, man, say it with me. Be bold and strong now. Jesus lives big in me. Yeah, he lives big in me. He lives big in me. Man, everywhere I walk, he walks. He gives me words to say so that when I talk, he talks. He's using my body. When I, when I pray for people, he just using me to pray through me. He's going to do some awesome things in their life. He's going to work some miracles because that's what Jesus does. And he's going to use me to do it. Amen. Amen. Because I am made 
to overcome. I am made to win. I am made to come out on top. I am made to walk through this thing and gain the victory over it. I'm created to do it. Ain't nothing I can't defeat. There's nothing I can't conquer. There's nothing that you cannot overcome. You can overcome anything you face through the power of the one that lives in you. Amen. Amen. That's why we're not down. That's why we're not out. That's why we've got a joy that the world can't take from us. Once again, doesn't mean we don't have a struggle. Doesn't mean we won't walk through a valley. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We, but we don't die in the valley. We overcome it. We conquer it by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And we come out the other side unscathed, kind of like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Some people getting thrown into the fire, but there was a fourth man in that fire. Amen. And when they come out of the fire, because of Jesus, there wasn't even the smell of smoke on the unscathed. Amen. Come on, just came out of it. Didn't even realize that they had ever been in it. Amen. You would have never known they were in it. In it because of the way God delivered them from it and I'm just trying to tell you that some of you guys man are like me and you've had a past but there are people who don't even believe that I had the past that I had because there's not even the smell of smoke on my life anymore amen I mean I am so through overcome victorious on the other side that you would never even believe that I trampled on the stomping grounds in which I have trampled amen there's not even a smell of smoke on me anymore amen all you can smell is victory <laughs> you say well that's that, that that sounds like a bunch of pride no let me tell you what pride is pride is exalting your opinion above God's opinion that's what pride is amen see the church has this false definition of humility and pride humility means I'm lowly there's nothing good in me I'm I'm, I'm a worm of the dust amen I'm just I'm nothing. I'm no. If you weren't nothing, Jesus wouldn't have came and die for you. If you were nothing, then, then he wouldn't have shed his blood to redeem you. There was a treasure that was in you that was so valuable to him that he decided to come and redeem you with the most precious commodity heaven had, which was the blood of Jesus. Worth more than gold, worth more than silver, worth more, worth, come on, are you listening to me? Amen. Worth more than a Tesla. <laughs> Amen. To, amen. Yeah, the blood of Jesus. I'm just letting you know. Amen. It's just, the most precious commodity that heaven had was, was spent to purchase you because of the value that God placed within you. Amen. How do you think? Come on. Any parents in this room? How, what do you think when your kids are running around saying, I ain't nothing. I'm nobody. I just, man, I can't ever do anything right. And I'm just... How do you feel as a father or a mother when your children are talking so low about themselves? You know what's going to happen in their life. You know that they're going to go into places that you don't want them to go into because of the ideas that are in their brain. Now, why on earth would the church ever teach somebody to be so depressed and lowly? No, it's not what the Bible is teaching us. Amen. It's not what God says about us. So here's the deal. You can be in pride anytime you disagree with God. And you can go either way with it. Oh, I'm just lowly. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. I'm a scum of the earth, worm of the dust. You are prideful because that is not the way God sees you. And that is not what God says about you. Amen? Now, you can go the other way, too. Amen? I'm better than the God is. Well, now you're in pride the other way, right? No, we need to have a sober judgment concerning ourselves. And what is a sober judgment? That we agree with what God says about us. And let me tell you something. He's got a really healthy opinion about his creation because he made you in his likeness and image. Are you listening to me? You weren't modeled off of a cow or a donkey. Right? That's not what you're modeled off of. You're modeled off of the master. You're modeled off of the God that created the world. You are his children and the only creation that is named sons and daughters of him. You are the only one. That bears that title. Angels looked into it and said, who is this man that you're mindful of him? The son of man that you visit him. You made him a little lower than yourself. Elohim. And crowned him with glory and honor. 
Who is this man that you love him so much? Hallelujah. Amen. He said, hey, no, no, that's, that, that's my kids. Only created thing made based off of my image and my likeness. I made them to conquer. I made them to be victorious. I made them to overcome. I made them to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means will hurt them when they put their trust in me. Yes. Amen. Yes. Now without him, no, we can't do nothing. But with him, all things are possible to those that believe. Amen. Because that's the way this thing works, man. We work with our Father, and all of a sudden, all of the miraculous possibilities of Daddy become our possibilities too. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now, we don't experience that when we're trying to do it on our own. So don't misunderstand me. I'm not telling you I'm going to overcome in every situation by my own power and might. No, that's not what we're saying. And so here's the deal. What we're doing is we're giving all glory to God because we will overcome every situation by the power of the one that lives in us. Now, that's a whole different ballgame there. Amen. That's giving glory to the one who deserves it. Amen. I didn't say me lives big in me. I said, Jesus lives big in me. Amen. Amen. And he lives big in you too. Do you believe it? Yes. You still trying to do this thing called life by yourself? Or are you trusting in Jesus? He's going to give me everything I need. The wisdom, the guidance, the direction, the power. Amen. The leadership. He's just going to give all of it. The resources, the money, the finances. He's going to give me everything, everything I need to be able to do what he's called me to do. I will overcome every obstacle, anything Satan throws in my path. I will walk on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And I will not be harmed. Amen. I mean, I think sometimes we just need to put the devil on notice. He's been busting our teeth in too long. We've been, we've been earnest, but we've been weak. And we've been weak because we're not daring to make the bold declarations of who we are in Christ Jesus and who God has created us to be. Not in our own strength, but because of the fact that he now lives within our heart. Amen? And all this stuff changes the moment Jesus moves in. Amen? So, John 14, 12, it says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And even greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. So, well, why does he say, you'll be able to do even greater works than these, because I go unto my Father? Because here's the deal. <laughs> when Jesus was on the earth, there's they only one Jesus. He can only be one place at one time. He's in a body. But when he goes to his Father, he gets to send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit moves into your heart and my heart and, and reproduces Christ in every human heart. So, so, so you just got to get the picture, amen? You got Satan who thought he understood how to destroy the glory. And he thought he understood how to do it because he did it with Adam. He got Adam to sin, amen? And the glory left Adam and Eve and man fell. So Jesus comes along all these years later, and, and all of a sudden he sees another person, spiritually speaking, that is a container and a carrier of the glory. Man, from the moment of his birth, he's just a container and carrier of the glory, like Adam used to be. And so he says, I got, I got to get the glory out. I got to put the glory out. Hey, because the glory, well, somebody that carries the glory, they can conquer me. They can destroy me. They can defeat me. But man, I got to get the glory out so I can rule and I can reign. Amen. But somebody with the glory, oh my goodness, they can rule over me. Right? And so, so he leads him to a mountain and he tempts him to sin. It worked with Adam. Only problem is Jesus wouldn't sin. <laughs> so he couldn't get the glory out. He couldn't put it out. So he figures, hey, the only way to get this to go out, I, 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 I'm going to I'm gonna have to kill him. We got to get him off the earth. Amen? So, so all of a sudden he begins to inspire the Pharisees and they rage up against him. And they don't even realize how they're being used of the devil. 
But the devil's inspiring all this stuff to kill the Lord of glory. That's what he wanted to do is kill the Lord of glory. Now, on the cross, God puts my sin and your sin on the Jesus, and Jesus becomes the sin bearer. The glory is gone. His soul becomes filled, not with his sin, he didn't have any of his own, but with your sin and with my sin. And, and Jesus on the cross says, Father, why have you forsaken me? Because that was the moment that he became the bearer for your sin. He didn't have the connection to God that he used to have. And Satan thought he won. The glory, yes, it's gone. Yes, now what he didn't realize though, is that God always works off the seed time and harvest. And that Jesus was the seed that would be planted in the earth. And since he had no sin of his own, hell couldn't hold him. And the, the very power and life of God that was on him before, now that he's completed the mission, was able to enter back into him again because there was no sin of his own. He paid for your sin and my sin and then received the same glory that he had before Amen. and rose again from the dead. And what Satan didn't know is that he would lead many sons to glory. That he was the seed that would be planted so that there would be a bumper crop of a new creation nation just like Jesus. So that you and I could be containers and carriers of the same identical glory that was in and on him. So that the devil would shake in his boots every single time he would see another son of glory pop up. Could you imagine what the devil thought, praise the Lord, on the day of Pentecost when 3,000 people got filled with Jesus and filled with God's Spirit and all of a sudden it wasn't one person with glory, 3,000 people, containers of the glory of God. He's losing his mind. He doesn't know what on earth to do. Because now he can't put the glory out. It just keeps spreading. Which is the reason why you and I need to be ones that are sharing Jesus with everybody. Because every time someone says, Lord, come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior, they get made to conquer. Because the same glory that is in the Christ is now living in human hearts. It's living right there in them. Are you listening to me? And these are people that Satan can control. These are people that rule and reign over him. These are people that undo his works. These are people that set captives free. These are people that will do the works of Jesus and even greater works than these will they do because Jesus lives in them because Jesus went to heaven and sent the spirit of glory into your heart. I'm just trying to tell you, man, we're letting Satan trap us in this natural mindset instead of gravitating to the mindset of Christ and boldly decreeing and declaring the power that now lives in you and me. Come on, the same power that rose Christ from the dead dwells in you and it will quicken and make alive even your mortal bodies by the agency of the Spirit of God that lives in you. Same power that rose Christ from the dead dwells in you. Now, that power has been hell tested and mother approved. Amen. Like, it, it has literally gone into hell. Amen. Bust hell wide open, made a triumphal procession of Satan and all his demons. Amen. It means, it means Jesus took that glory and busted him down, drug him around heaven, but naked, praise the Lord, and made a triumphal procession of Satan and all. Now, listen, that same glory, that same power that enabled Jesus to do that to the devil lives on the inside of you. What should you be doing to the devil that's in your life? You need to be overcoming and conquering. Amen. You need to be busting him down and dragging him around and not letting him drag you around anymore. Put it under your feet. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. A valley of death don't sound like a lot of fun. But you're a life bearer in the valley. 
You're a container of glory that brings life everywhere you go. Who knows? Maybe the valley of the shadow of death turns into a life-filled place by the time you make it through it. like my job is a valley of death maybe you are planted there because by the time you'll be finished there it won't be a valley of death anymore because there was a life bearer in it and the plan of satan and the work of satan will be undone by the life bearers amen, amen? But are you believing that the greater one's living on the inside of you? Yes. Amen. Check this out. Acts 1 and 8, you will receive, say it with me, power. you got some power. Amen. After the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He lives in you. He comes on you. He empowers you. Yeah. Come on. You ain't going through this life in your own limitations and boundaries. You're going through this life in limitless. Because the power of God that's upon you. Just say that with me. Say, God's power, God's power. it is on me. On yeah, uh-huh. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Come on, somebody getting bold about some of these declarations just yet. Amen. So Mark 16, 17, and 18 in the Wade translation says, by use of my name. Now notice this, by the use of the name of Jesus, amen. It's not by my power, it's by his power. It's using his name and his authority that's been given to me because of what Jesus has done for me. Amen. So this isn't me, but this is, this is the use of his name. This is allowing Jesus to use my body. Come on. They will place their hands even upon invalids and they will be restored to health. That's, uh, by the way, that's not talking about Jesus uh, in his earthly ministry. That's talking about you in yours. Amen. Because Christ is living big in you. And there's a power that is upon you. And there is a glory that you carry that will undo all the works of darkness. That's why I never understood Christians that want to straddle the fence. One foot in the world and one foot in the church. Are you kidding me? I want the power. I want the glory. I want the splendor. I want to get lost in it. I want to drown in it. Amen? I want to jump in it and swim through it. I want to be so far over on this side that my life is reflecting the power and the glory of Jesus. I don't want to sit there with one foot in and one foot out trying to figure out how to balance this thing and just make it through the pearly gates. Get out of here. I want to open up the blind eye. I want to see the deaf ear pop open, the lame walking, and the prisoners and captives set free. All right? Yeah, now that's what I want to see. I don't want to wait to get to heaven to make sure that I had this thing right. I want to know it's right now because I've seen exactly what happened in the life of Jesus started happening in my life because Jesus was in my, he just using my body. <laughs> Amen. Now that means that we're containers of the very glory of God, containers of the very life of Jesus. Jesus lives in us. We're temples of the Most High God. The question to it is, are we going to make bold declarations concerning that? Amen. Or are we going to stay with a natural mindset? Amen. Come on, man. Miracles aren't in the boat. They're when we get out. It's when we dare to be bold enough to do and say things others wouldn't do and say. Amen. Come on, you had 12 disciples, but you only had one walk on water. The one that was bold enough to say, Jesus, bid me come. <laughs> come on, man. Amen. He made a bold declaration and experienced what only Jesus experienced. Just Jesus, just Jesus and Peter, man. Only ones that got to experience that. I don't know about you. I, I, I wouldn't mind experiencing that too. But I'm not going to experience that. Straddling a fence going to experience that because I'm starting to get bold enough to declare, Jesus, if you can do it, then I can do it. Because you live in me, and you breathe through me, and you walk in me. And when I walk, you walk. Come on, amen. And I'm yielding to you, so when I talk, you talk. You fill my mouth with things to say. Amen. I don't have to worry about it. Well, what am I going to say to this person when I witness to him? I ain't worrying about that. You'll fill my mouth. Amen. Because you live in me. Amen. You breathe through me. Amen. And you're going to use my body. 
And I'm just going to yield myself to you, the Lord of glory. Amen. Work miracles in my midst. Do the impossible. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here, uh, uh, Moffat, I like Moffat's translation. They said they will lay their hands on the sick and they will make them well. <laughs> Amen. This isn't like, well, maybe you get well. No, this is like, we're going to pump you with the life of God until sickness and disease depart. Amen. And your body gets filled with the radiance of life. We're just going to keep on praying and pressing in and pumping you up with the life and the glory that's in us until we just make you well. <laughs> Say, that's a bold declaration. I know, but the problem is the church doesn't declare these things, and so we weak. We're earnest, but we're weak because we fail to make the declarations. Oh, I might be in pride. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not boasting on me, silly. Haven't you gotten it yet? We are trusting Christ to help. We're boasting on Jesus. The one that lives in us. Amen. I know I ain't Jesus. I've smelt my breath in the morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We know. Amen. We know. But we also know that the greater one lives in us. And we can't act like he doesn't. In the church for a long time, we act like he doesn't. We still, are call, we still call ourselves sinners saved by grace after we've been saved. No, you were a sinner before you got saved. You're not a sinner afterwards. You're not a righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You better start declaring that. Can I tell you something? As long as you sit there and declare you're a sinner, you always going to struggle with sin. But if you ever start to make some bold declarations of your righteousness and your holiness, amen, and that you've been set apart to the Lord all, come on, all of a sudden, it's funny. I have never been able to sin when I felt righteous. You know, when I make, you know when I mess up? When I stop feeling righteous. <laughs> you know when I stop feeling righteous? When I stop boldly declaring my righteousness. And I start siding back in with the old man that should be dead and buried. Instead of boldly declaring the new man that God has created. That's why we are to put off concerning our former conduct, the old man. See, he grew the way he grew through deceitfulness. But we put on the truth of who we are because God has now been connected to us and we've been connected to him. Amen. And we don't we don't live and we don't think and we don't speak like we used to be because we are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we think differently now. We live differently now. Because they're. Because we're not going through this life apart from him. We're going through it with him, empowered by him, because he lives in our hearts. Can you imagine the Lord of glory living on the inside of you? And he's seeing all the stuff you're going through, the struggles that you're facing, the things that you don't feel like you can overcome. And here he's in you because you were made to overcome. And he's saying, man, I wish you'd just release me. So that you could see who you really are. I wish you would trust me. Because if you would just put your faith and trust in me. You're going to watch mountains move. Amen. Praise the Lord. So say this with me. Say. Are you ready to make a bold declaration? All right. Don't patty cake around here now. Say it with me. There is power in me to conquer this world. Yeah, there is. There is power. There's some resurrection power. Amen. There's some power to open up some blind eyes. There's some power to open up deaf ears. Power to make the lame walk. The works that Jesus did, you can do too. And even greater works because of all the power that God has placed within you. Because you receive power from on high when you were filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Yeah. But do you believe it? Amen. What's coming at your mouth? What's coming at your lips? What's coming off your tongue? Amen. Is it weakness and defeat and failure? Because you're, because you're mindful of the person you used to be? Or are you renewing your mind in Christ Jesus? Amen. And, 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 and are you making some bold declarations of who you now are and what you now possess? Because of Christ that lives in you. Amen. 
So uh, Matthew 7, 24, and I just love this. It says in the Message Bible, these words that I'm speaking to you, this is Jesus talking, you might want to take notice, amen? He says, they are not incidental additions to your life. That, that's not what I'm doing here, amen? They're not some homeowner improvement to your standard of living. <laughs> oh, that's what you thought this was? <laughs> Amen. Hey, uh, I'm going to come into the church and then God will just kind of bless my marriage and he just kind of bless me on my job. And he's got, you know, I'll get some homeowner improvement to my standard of living. He said, no, that's not what this is. The words that I'm giving to you, these are foundational words for your life. They are words that you're supposed to build your life on. Amen. You don't add it to your life. You build your life on it. Amen. And so it goes on to tell us this, praise the Lord. If you work these words into your life, but notice you got to work them in. But if you will work them in, then you are like a smart carpenter who built his house on a solid rock. Yeah. Now you got to work them in, but if you will work these words in, then you will be like a smart carpenter that built his house on a solid rock. You got to work them in. But if you would ever work them in, then you would see the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So whenever I talk about working words in, I, it, it makes me, it, it reminds me of blueberry pancakes. How many have ever had some blueberry pancakes? I like blueberry pancakes. You might like chocolate pancakes, you know, and that's fine, whatever. But I like some, some blueberry pancakes. And wherever you go, you got to figure out what they talk about when they say blueberry pancakes. Because there are some places that just put blueberries on top of the pancakes. That is not a blueberry pancake. <laughs> that is a regular pancake with some blueberries on top. Now, you know when you got a good place, amen, because they, they put the blueberries right into the batter. Right? They mix the blueberries into the pancake. The, it's not something on top. It's not incidental homeowner improvements to their life. They, they, it's not something just on top. It's been mixed into the batter. It's, been, it's become a part of the pancake itself. And the best ones, by the way, are the ones that have it mixed into the batter and put on top. Amen? And then you just know with every single bite, you're going to hit a blueberry. Now, if that was the word of God, then let me tell you something. How many know that the devil would not mess with you? If you ever got this word mixed into your batter, if you ever worked the word into your life, if you ever mixed it into your batter, amen, and then, and then not just mixed it in, praise the Lord, but, but you put some on top too, amen. You just surrounded yourself. You put it in you. You put it on you, amen, and, and you just taking the word, and, and man, you fall in love with it, amen. You're allowing it to be a foundational piece of your life, amen. You're mixing it into everything you say and everything you do. Now, see, the devil, the devil ain't scared of the Christian that resembles the pancake with some blueberries on top. Because he knows he can bring in some events that just wipe off the blueberries. And then he just, he just left to devour the pancake. But he don't want you to mix them into the batter. Because if the blueberry represents the word of God, there's some of it, we just kind of put it on top. And events come in and it just... And then here we are without God. Just an average pancake in a fallen world. <laughs> but if you ever mix this stuff into the batter, then guess what? He can't just take events that, that skim the word off of the top of your life because it's become a part of who you are. And every time he attacks you, with every bite he tries to take, he hits the word of God. Amen. He tried to put sickness on you. And before you know, mm, by his stripes, I'm healed. No, I'm sorry. You ain't putting this stuff on me. God has blessed my bread and water and taken sickness away from the midst of me. And he's hitting blueberries. The moment he tries to attack, blueberries are coming out. Because you took the time to not just have these as incidental words, additions to your life, but you work them into your life. 
Amen. You lost your job and it's uh uh-uh, my God shall supply my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. You just watch as God does some awesome stuff in my life. My job is not my source. It is just a resource. Amen. He is the source and you just watch what he does. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He became poor so that through his poverty he might make me rich. He's not going to leave me in this situation. You watch as he works through me. And Satan's just scratching his head saying, I don't know what to do with this person. I mean, every time I attack him, I hit a blueberry. Every time I try to take a bite out of him, I hit the word of God. Amen. Amen. So, here goes a confession. Say this with me. Say it loud and proud. There is nothing that I cannot master through the master who lives in me. There ain't nothing I can't master through the master that lives in me. Now, you, you got to get this, man. You got to get this because it applies across your entire life. This applies to school. Amen? You got to get this into your kids because when they're going to school, how many know you you get these classes that you excel in, but then there's these classes that are difficult for you. And they make you just want to quit and give up. And you got to realize, no, we don't quit because we're not quitters. We are overcomers. We conquer. We always conquer. We can do it. We can do all things through Christ. We win. We will win. It, we might have to go through a little bit of stuff, but here's the deal. God's going to supply me with the wisdom. He's going to supply me with the know-how. He's going to open up the eyes of my understanding. I'm going to be able to get this. There is nothing that I cannot master because the master lives in me. Amen. And this master lives in me. Let me tell you something. He knows math. He knows geometry. Amen. He knows calculus. He knows all of this stuff. Way better than any human. And he can supply you with wisdom and understanding. And he can open up your eyes in a heartbeat. But here's the deal. You've got to trust Christ to help. So yeah, if you think you got to figure this out on your own and that you're that, then yet yeah, it's going to get overwhelming. It's going to get frustrating, but if you start realizing no 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 no, Jesus is going to he going to help me with this. He's going to reveal this to me. He's going to Now I might have to study. I might have to apply myself in some of these areas, but I will get it because Christ is going to open this up to me. There's nothing I can't master because of the master that lives in me. You need to apply this on your job. Amen? Because, because there's time that they start putting other things on you and it can start to feel a little bit overwhelming. And you say, uh-uh, no, no, no. Ain't nothing going to be overwhelming. There's nothing I can't master because Jesus lives in me. I have a peace that passes all understanding. I've got a joy this world can't take from me. I have, a, I have a God in me that will give me witty ideas and inventions. I will come up with ways to do this. I'll be able to do the work of ten people and, and, and not even blink an eye or lose some sleep. God will show me how to do it. He'll teach me how to do it. I'll figure out ways that no one has ever done dreamt or thought of because there is nothing I cannot master because of the master who lives in me and he supplies me with the wisdom he supplies me with the knowledge he supplies me with the skill he supplies me with the strength he supplies me with the encouragement he supplies me with the faith he supplies me with the love he supplies me with the joy he he is my all supply of everything and I am trusting him to help because I am created to overcome I am made for this Amen. Uh, uh, I'm not going to let somebody in the world outplay me. Uh, uh, no, 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 not when Christ lives in me. I'm not going to let the world come up with witty inventions and all this type of, no, uh, no, God, you're going to give this to me. You live in me. Yeah. If anybody's going to see this, you can do it through your church. Amen. I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. <laughs> Amen. No, uh uh-uh, I got you living in me. And so here the Bible says this, praise the Lord, in Ephesians chapter 3, 17. This is the the Passion Translation. It says, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. But you got to constantly use your faith. You got to use it in everything. Amen. Amen. Whatever you face, I'm not facing it alone. I'm facing it with Jesus. I'm trusting Christ to help. I am created to conquer. I am made to do it. I can't do it on my own and in my own strength, but I don't need to do it on my own. I'm trusting in the strength God supplies. 
Amen? But I need to use it everywhere. I need to use it with my family. I need to use it with my kids. I need to use it on my job. I need to use it at church. I need to use it for my calling. I need to constantly be using my faith so that the power of Christ gets released deep inside of me. Amen? And all of a sudden, I find that resting place of his love where I know it's going. It's all going to be okay. God is making a way. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So uh, Philippians 4.13 in the Amplified Bible says, I can do all things which God has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. Say this with me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. <laughs> you know what that means? It means you don't lack nothing. That's what it means. You are self-sufficient, not in yourself. But you are self-sufficient because of Christ's sufficiency, <laughs> because of what it is in you. And so you are complete and able to meet any task and challenge. Yeah. Amen. You can do it all because of the sufficiency of Christ that lives in you. So it goes on to tell us this in the Amplified. It says, I am ready for anything and I am equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Man, I'm ready for anything. Amen. And ain't nothing can overwhelm me. Amen. Amen. I can do it. I can do all things. I'm equal to any task. There is no task that, that is above me that I can't do. I am equal to any task. I am made to conquer. Amen. So, let me show you just a few other translations. I just like this. Amen. It says, through him who constantly empowers me, I have strength for anything that I may encounter. There's not one thing you're encountering that God doesn't supply you strength to overcome. What if you thought that way? What if you believed that way? Oh, man, I'm just getting overwhelmed. Oh, don't do that. Matter of fact, the Bible even tells you that. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, throw up some other translations. The Levitt translation, no situation can overwhelm you now. But I'm, feel I'm feeling so overwhelmed. No, silly. No situation can overwhelm you now. Thanks to Christ who supplies you with his strength. If you're feeling overwhelmed, it's because you're not tapping in to the supply. Amen? So no, repent of that and then tap into the supply because there ain't no situation that can overwhelm you when you're tapped into the source. Amen? Yeah, nah, I'm not, no, I'm not going to let nothing overwhelm me. Why? Thanks to the one that lives in me. The Jerusalem translation says, There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one who gives me strength. Amen? There is nothing I cannot master. This is, by the way, where I got your last confession from. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the one. That is the master <laughs> who gives me strength. There is nothing I cannot master with the help of the master that lives in me. Amen? I know I can do this. I can, do, I can run through troops and leap over walls. There is nothing impossible for you or for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, uh, here's the deal, though, is we've mixed it all up in the church. What we've done is we told you that, that faith is trusting in your ability to believe. But faith is not trusting in your ability to believe. Faith is trusting in God's ability to supply. That's what faith is. I'm not trusting, oh man, I, 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 I trust that I can believe for this. I don't give a rip if I think I can or can't. I'm not trusting in my ability. I'm trusting in his ability to supply me. If he needs to supply me with more faith, he will strengthen me and give me more faith. He will give me whatever I need. My trust is in his ability to supply all that I need. So if I need it, he'll supply it. If I need more faith, he'll just give it to me. He's the supply of it. He'll give it to me. I'm just trusting in the supply. Whatever I need, God, you will supply. I trust in you to help. Do I have enough faith for this? That's the, I don't even ask that question. What are you talking about? Have enough faith for what? What does that matter? No, the, the question is, do I have enough faith for it? The question is, do I believe that God is faithful to his word and will supply me? He got me. I'm covered. I'm good. He lives in me and he will strengthen me, empower me, encourage me, and give me everything I need to overcome because I am made and created for this. 
So here's the last scripture that I'll give you. Praise the Lord. It's in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. It says, my God will supply. Yeah, he's the supply. That's all we're doing when we're trusting Christ to help. We're just trusting that, that he will supply us with all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And can I tell you something? His riches and glory means that he's not giving you just enough of a supply to make it through. He doesn't supply your need to the need. He supplies your need to his riches and glory in comparison to the need. <laughs> he doesn't give you just enough faith to make it through. He gives you so much faith that you can just triumph and walk over every, every single demon and hellish plan so that no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Amen. Like he doesn't give you just the equal to it. He gives you his riches and glory, a supply above whatever you need. Amen. Come on, think about it. With your God, he doesn't just fill your cup till it's full. Now, if anybody could fill a cup till it's full, it would be God. God would know how to fill it so that one more drop, it would overflow. He could fill it to the full. Anybody could do it, it'd be God, and yet God doesn't pour that way. Come on, David said that my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come on, God, he, filled, he doesn't just fill my cup, he makes it run over because he doesn't give you according to what's needed in the glass. He gives you according to his riches in Christ Jesus. He is always pouring out on you more than you can even hold. He's always giving you more than you need for the task at hand. His supply isn't a little bit. <laughs> His supply is way more than what you will need. You got more faith than you need to make it through whatever you're going through. He's going to supply it to you. You say, oh, pastor, I just can't believe for that. What are you talking about? Stop believing in yourself and start believing in the Christ that lives in you. He supplies it to you. Just believe in the supply. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And if you believe that in the supply, then you know what you say. You change your confession. I am supplied with more than I need to believe for the highest and the best. Amen. It, 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 come on, it don't come from me. I don't originate this. and it, It's not because of my great brain power. I'm not trying to tap into the latent power of the soul. <laughs> no. I'm trusting in the supply of the Lord. Somebody say, I just can't love that person. What are you talking about? You have such a supply in your heart of love. God didn't give you just enough love. Or, 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 you know, he just gave you just a little bit less. And, and all these people you could love, but this person you can't love because they're just above the supply. <laughs> no! According to his riches and glory, he gave you so much love. He shed a brother, brought the love of God in your heart so much more so that you have a bigger supply than any jerk you'll encounter. You can love everybody. With the love of God, and you have more than enough love to love them. Amen. I'm just letting you know. But for some reason in the church, we keep coming at God with this area or this or this air or this mindset of lack. And I'm just telling you, the new creation you are, you are made to conquer. But you, if you come at your situation thinking that you lack what you need, you will not tap in to the supply God will give. And it'll conquer you. But if you will start to trust Christ for help, yeah. you supply everything I need so I am adequately furnished and I am more than able to overcome. You will overcome anything you're facing. Can I get an amen? And so, Father, I just ask that you would take the word that we preach today, that, Father God, the confessions that we made today, that, Father, you would begin to work this word so that they are not just incidental additions to our life, but that you would work it into the very fabric of who we are, that, Father, we would never see ourselves the same way again, that today's message would change that within us and that we would see ourselves as adequately supplied able for any task that we are facing 
more than enough that you have given to us because you have made us to conquer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.